Morning everybody, it's been a long time since I've done a watercolour video so I hope you enjoy this short one about a tree frog. So my image is from pixabay.com, I'm free to use it for commercial use, pixabay is great. You can donate for coffee if you like but you don't have to, uh, I always do. So there's my frog, gorgeous frog. Okay now I've done my drawing onto hot pressed £140 watercolour paper. I'll be putting all the details of my materials and equipment in the description below, okay? Uh, I just done my sketch there last night. Now, as I'm looking at my frog, I'm deciding what sort of colours I might need to use. You know, so obviously I'll use some probably sap green, maybe some oxide of chromium. Then I'll definitely use some burnt umber. I'll actually, I'm going to use a tiny little bit of gold today, acrylic um, gold, you know? But if you don't have acrylic gold... Just use some, uh, maybe some gouache or some opaque white mixed with a bit of yellow. Now, um, under his chest, it looks a little bit complicated. It's hard to tell what colour actually is going on there. Lots of folds and wrinkles. So what I've got is a piece of watercolour paper with some holes in it, punched in it. So when I place those, um, those holes over an area that I'm trying to isolate to better judge the colour with my eye... I can see right, well that sort of colour is a bit of a, quite a dark brown actually, but it's not a warm brown, it's a cold brown, cooler brown. And then when you go down right by his, his belly there, under there, that's sort of uh, like a raw amber colour. And then under his chin there, that's a bit more sort of yellowy, you see? So, so this is helping me judge my colours a bit better because when I'm looking at the frog there's too much distraction going on. And obviously his... his, his there that's pure green you know so you can use this as something to help you to judge the colors a bit better um you could use masking fluid to to mask out some little areas there these circular areas but i'm just doing a study for a bigger painting i'm doing on tuesday at an art society so i'm not going to spend too much time on that you could rub some wax some of these wax resist sticks you know along his lip there you could rub some of the wax you know there uh, actually on on the drawing you know you could rub it there to preserve the white of the paper you could rub a little bit there All right. in fact I, I might do that on this one on this frog so i'll just um uh, just checking on my color i'm just going to rub a bit of wax along his lip there for a bit of white and uh where, where his uh arm joins his body there it's a bit white and he's got a little sort of stripe there along the edge of his foot with his leg. And then these funny little circular skin markings. Just a few little bits there. And then there's a sort of whitish area above the black stripe that goes into his eye. So I've just given a few little touches, a few little touches of texture. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do... I've got a size 5 round watercolour brush. I'm going to soak the entire frog. That brush is a bit dirty. Right. Soak the entire frog with water. I haven't stretched this paper because this is just a study. Um, it's buckling a little bit, but I'm going to live with that. If you don't want your paper to buckle, you must either use much thicker paper that can absorb more water before it buckles, or you can stretch your paper. I've got a video here on YouTube all about stretching paper. Okay, so you, you can watch that and it tells you what to do. So I'm wetting only the inside of the frog. And the reason I'm doing that, if you follow me here on YouTube, you know that I like to wet the paper so that when I put the first washes on, you know, I have soft edges. I don't want hard edges yet. Especially on uh, this frog, he's quite wrinkly. I love uh, frogs, they're very paintable, aren't they? So right down into his toes, into his little fingers and whatever. 
wet those so that the paint will flow everywhere on the frog. This is a size 5 round watercolour brush. It's a synthetic one. I very rarely, well I don't buy um, squirrel hair or any animal hair anymore because I just would feel bad about that. An animal dying, you know, being farmed for its fur just so that they can paint. So I try and be as cruelty free as I can with my painting. Okay, if I can, sh if I can show you this now in the light. See it's wet all over, see? So there's a shine on it all over there. <clears throat> right, so the first colour I'm going to put on is a little bit of raw umber. It's like sort of sandy colour, um, sandy clay colour, you know, a bit of raw umber. Now that's, that's very sort of brown, so to neutralise that a little bit, I'm going to add a tiny little speck of, of um, Windsor Violet. Because Windsor Violet is sort of opposite raw umber on the colour wheel and uh, it neutralises it a little bit. It takes that, you know, brightness out of it a bit. Now it's little toes. I've got a little bit of this brown in it. There's a few folds under his belly there. His back, back foot has definitely got quite a bit of brown in it, looking at my photograph. His toes have dried out a lot already, actually. Right, so under there, brown. As you can see, the paint isn't flowing wildly. It's 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 given me a soft edge when I make the marks, but it's not flowing terribly out of control. There's a few folds in there. I'm leaving a little bit sort of unpainted uh, because he's a bit paler there, as you can see on the photograph. But it's mostly dark there, and that toe out on its own is a bit of this brown colour as well. There's a bit of sort of muted brown going on there. Now for the green, I'm going to use a bit of uh, sap green. And I've got a few droplets of water on my palette as you can see. And so I just drag them into the mix there. Okay. And then a little bit of oxide of chromium. It's a very sort of, if you can see it there, it's very sort of um, dulled green, strange green, and then I'm going to pull in a little bit of this raw umber that's left on the palette, just to sort of take the green and make it less virulent. I'm going to pop some green all over the frog now. get some green colour on him and then we can manipulate it a bit more. Right, it's just green, a little bit of green under there. There's a bit of green on that leg there and let that bleed into the brown, don't worry about it bleeding in. I love the way his uh, sort of elbow is sticking up at a Sort of quite an uncomfortable angle. He looks quite sort of gawky. And of course, the paint will only uh, flow where you've wet the inside of the frog. So, you know, it won't flow anywhere outside of the frog shape. So you haven't got to worry about that. Right, so I've got some green all over the frog now. Um, but as I'm looking at the frog, you know, he, he, it's a bit, uh, the, the green has got a, is a bit darker here than say on his mouth, isn't it? See it's darker, that's paler. And there's, uh, there's creases, you know, where his uh, legs and arms are folding. So I'm going to pop, and there's, it's a little bit darker there between his, the two bulges of his eyes, they're a bit darker there. So I'm going to go for a smaller brush. So maybe a size three brush, a size three round brush. I'm going to wet it take off the excess water and then I'm going to mix a stronger more viscous you see see how much more uh, oily you know that is 
So that's the green, sap green, and now oxide of chromium again. And I'm going to add to this a speck, a little tiny speck of Windsor Violet, you see. So that's dulled that, it's duller and stronger and less runny than the wash I put on earlier. And then straight away, I'm going to have that darker green. On his back here where it, where it is a darker green but because the frog is still wet it's blending in you know not getting too hard an edge there's a darker piece behind this leg here this leg is paler behind it is darker and it's darker behind his L, his uh, side of his arm there and all the time I've been talking and painting the papers drying a bit so you don't get too much of a bleed. There's a little crease there, so we'll just drop a bit of darker watercolour in there. And um, there's a few, a few little folds there. And there's a bit more of a, a shadow there. This leg. There's a bit of a bit of um, water puddling there where the, where the paper's buckled and there's a dip. So with the brush that I've wiped clean, I'm going to suck up that excess puddle, rinse my brush, dry it again, suck up the puddle so it sits a bit better. Okay, so now I'm just going to pick my painting up and just tip it and let things run. You can still see the moisture in there, you see. It stays moist because this is cotton rag paper and cotton rag paper holds moisture much better than wood pulp. Wood pulp paper is basically cheaper paper and it's normally called Bockingford. You know, it's 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 a goodish paper, I'm not knocking it, but cotton rag will uh, cotton will hold much more moisture for you. So I've got a soft look there on the frog, okay? So at this point now, before I stop and dry him, I just feel like I want a few little streaks of yellow here and there, just to warm him up and give him a bit of zing. So while that's still a little bit moist, let's pick up a little bit of uh, cadmium, uh, uh, cadmium yellow deep, or any any warm yellow, and it's about that dilution. Okay, it's not very strong. And I'm just going to drop in, I sense there's a bit of yellow under his uh, throat there, which I want to mix in. A bit of yellow going out to his nose. And I'm just going to pop a few bits of yellow on this uh, uh, arm. And a little touch there. And on that back knee. That will dry a lot paler than it is. At the moment I just wanted to add some warmth because because otherwise he's looking a bit cold green and purple are actually neutral colors they're neither warm nor cool you know pure green and pure violet um, so I just wanted to add a bit of yellow to warm him up there okay so I'm going to stop now and uh, I'll dry him gently with a hairdryer. I'd recommend normally drying him, you know, naturally. But because of time, I want to get this done. Okay, so back in the next clip. Okay, the frog is totally dry now. He's had a bit of a hair dry. <coughs> so, as you can see, he's, he's rather flat. You know, there's not much definition on him, really, apart from the darker area here. And uh, he's paler there. So I'm going to start adding some darker um, passages now to push the light covered areas forward a bit more. All right, so let's mix up a puddle. I'm going to use my size three brush. I'm going to mix up a darker puddle of the green again. So sap green, some oxide of chromium, um, maybe a little bit of French ultramarine blue, yeah, that's taking it down a bit, just taking that green down and then a little bit of 
Windsor Violet a little tiny bit because it's very strong. Now that's a much stronger green than I've got on there at the moment. As you can see, if I hold the you know hole over the area and paint, you know that's a much darker tone of green, isn't it? So that's going to make some strong contrasts. Now, when I'm putting that on, I want to have another size three brush at the ready, which I'm going to wet really well, wet it really well, then flick it, shake it really well, but don't dry that, don't dry the hairs, leave that there as a blending brush. Actually, I'm just going to dry the handle because you don't want blobs running down of water. So there's my moisten brush at the ready. So for example, let's, let's put a nice little shadow down in here, you know, a bit of artistic license. This might not be catching so much light and it will also help define the arm of the frog. So I'm going to put a dark passage of green down in there. And just to push that, um, you know, to show where that arm is. And then very quickly, with this moist brush, I'm going to blend that softly away. Okay, so it's just blended it away into the green of the skin from the first wash. So it's a bit, a bit softer, it's not such a hard line. Then we can pop a little that green crease in there. This is there, and there's a little sort of crease there. Right. Then we'll have um, a darker area here as well. Start defining the uh, around the eye. Now that line, rinse your brush again, flick it. And you've got a nice moist brush and then touch into the extreme extreme edge of it and gently ro rotate see you rotating your brush just scampering scampering along that outer edge very gently and just blending that away you see so you've got a more of a defined area there so in in there we'll have a little bit of a crease in that back leg rinse my brush take all the green out, flick my brush and again start right on that you know the last millimetre of that passage of green you've just put on and just soften it away, rinse your brush it all the time I'm also going to just soften the edge of those lines, those green lines just to sort of make them less hard, okay just soften over them like that Now in his back I'm sensing there's a few sort of dents and dips, so I'm painting this area and then tapering it off like that. And again I'm going to rinse my brush. I mean really I should work this way, so I've got to turn it upside down so it's easier for me to soften it. So I'm working sort of left to right, so I'm just going to soften that passage. That I just put on, you've got to soften immediately because it, it, it dries very fast. See, so soften that away. So we've got a bit of um, form coming on his back now, all right? So under uh, his belly now, um, no, I tell you what, we've we'll just put the brown mark in now. So into that, we'll have a stronger mix again more sap green, more oxide of chromium, a little bit of water, and now burnt umber. and a bit of French ultramarine blue. And this is going to be this strong dark colour that starts at the nostril there. And then comes, uh, it's a bit, bit broken. It's not a perfectly uh, solid line and the dark eye. goes down under the eye there and breaking it so I'm not making it too solid and there's that dark patch there and it tapers up a bit into the eye reload my brush there's this darker area again and it goes into a sort of curve thing there I must find out what that part of the anatomy of the frog is it's a strange curve the black is 
a bit uh, rugged, a little bit of a rugged line as it's going along here. Loading my brush up and then it carries on. It's a little bit ragged and it's got a, the pale, uh, pale either side, you know, that's sort of almost like a cream strip, very pale. I'm trying to leave a little bit of that paleness showing for contrast. Above and below this dark green, greeny brown stripe. Okay. And uh, I'm going to put a bit more dark right under the shadow of these back toes and just taper away there. And then immediately, I'm going to rinse my size 3 brush again and just touch into that line I did here and there just to make it a bit lost and found so it's not a hard drawn paint line all over but it gives us some definition. Right now under the chin there's quite a dark piece there and it sort of tapers away about there and it comes around. And there's a very fine, darker area in between his lips. And that's very f fine. Then it tapers away. Again, moistening my size 3 brush. And just blending that dark edge into the green of the skin under his chin there a bit more. Taper that away. Right, I'm going to do some dark raw umber areas under his belly now. So into that mix, that we've got still a little bit of that greeny mix. I'm going to add some more raw umber, just mixing slightly to the side of it. So that I can just drag a bit of the green in if I want, you know. So it's a greeny brown mix. Dilute. And it's darker there. And this barely goes quite dark right down there where the light, where not much light would get it. And then there's um, a dark area there. Which actually joins this area. There's a few sort of folds there as well. A little bit of light getting on the belly there. And then there's a dark shadow under this crease of the belly there. Right, so I've got a lot of creases and folds on right now, but they're all quite hard, okay? So with um, my size 3 brush, I've wet it and I've flicked it. So I've got a tiny, tiny bit of moisture in there. So I'm just going to touch in at the edge of those raw umberish green passages and, and, and fade them off, you see? So that becomes a bit softer. Rinse again, flick your brush. Now this is quite a big puddle of green, so when I touch into it, it's probably going to flare into this area quite strongly, so I'm just going carefully with that. Rinse my brush. Now there's a hard, pale area in amongst the dark green, wet area, and one there. So I'm very carefully going to just soften it without losing it, you know, I don't want to lose the paler bit in the middle, so very gently. And this is very hard white area here, so I'm softening it up that way. Just going in there with this very slightly moist brush and just softening it away, but I haven't lost that shape too much. It's still a paler area against this darker area, okay? 
Right, she's got a little bit more definition on him now. I'm going to do a bit of uh, work on the feet now. The shadows will all be on these right hand uh, parts of the, the toes. So I'm just starting uh, and doing that now. A bit of shadow work with this brownie green mix. I'll put it on this side here. And there's a little crease where this circular pad then comes out from. Doing studies like this helps you get to understand the um, anatomy of your subject, if it's an animal, you know, without the pressure of doing a completed painting. So I'm just learning about, you know, the shapes. And it's an education, isn't it? You know, whatever you pay attention to, you get to know it much better. Right, I'm going to put a bit of that colour up into the eye there and leave a few little gaps, put a few specks and then brush that round. See this hard green that I put in, I'm just going to work away at that, like with the tip of this brush, just work it away so it's a bit um, faint, more faint, so that it doesn't end in a strong dark green right by the eye. I just want this dark green to blend in a bit more around his eyes, lovely eye. And then there's a little bit of a shadow under there. And taper that away. Right, I'm going to do a bit of dry brush scratchy work now. So with this size 3 brush, I'm going to wipe it in, a, in the flannel, pick up a little bit of uh, green paint, not very wet, uh, almost straight from the tube, okay? And I'll work it in like that into my brush. And then I'm going to hold it quite uh, parallel, flat to the paper like this. See, this paper's um, hot pressed, so it hasn't got much tooth in it at all. And I'm just going to scratch in a bit of texture. You have to go very lightly. If you're using rough paper or hot um, or cold pressed paper, you'll get better result than I'm getting. But I just wanted to put a bit of texture with this scr 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 scratchy dry brush over the frog, just sort of diagonally like that, okay? I'm keeping my brush, I'm holding it by the ferrule and holding it really flat. Okay, so he's come in now a little bit. Right, the next thing to do is to get out the gold acrylic paint. So I'm literally going to be careful with your brushes, you know, as soon as we put this on, I'm, I'm taking literally a tiny speck out of the lid, you know, and then I'm going to just work it onto my brush using a bit of paper as, as, as a mix in place. Don't mix acrylic with your watercolour paints because they will affect them badly. So let's put a bit of this gold in the eye. I have to rinse my brush again. Um, when we finish doing this frog, rinse your water pot, wipe it out with the tissue because the acrylic will, particles will cling to the inside of your pot, you know, and can have, you know, an effect on your watercolour. So just get rid of all traces of acrylic. It's a bit of a toxic substance, really. It'll ruin your brushes if you don't wash them out really well. So I'm making little stippled effects now in the eye. And you know, while I've got this on my brush, I might just put a few little uh, stipples around his these little white uh, blobs in his skin on his belly, just for an e echo, to echo the acrylic, uh, to echo the gold colour a little bit somewhere else on the frog so that there's just not this isolated occurrence of it. And I'll put a little bit on his, um, yeah, on that, because I want to sort of push that elbow feel in there. 
So a bit of the acrylic on the elbow of the frog, which will show up nicely against the dark shadow that we put on. So I'm rinsing my brush really well. Oops, sorry, if I just zoom in, you can see the bit of gold I put there. I mean, it, see, it's a little bit shiny, it's shining a little bit, shine a bit better when it's dry. So let's zoom out a bit now. He's come in now, rinsing my brush with the acrylic on, get rid of that really well. Now, the only thing that I'm not liking at the moment is this, this lip is a bit hard. So I'm going to run a bit of the very dilute, this shadowy sort of browny green colour under the bottom lip and over the green line that I did a few minutes ago and just try and dissolve it a bit so that the, the hard line of the smiling frog just dissolves in a bit into the lower lip so it's not so, you know, obvious. Take it up over the nose a little bit, just to lose that hard line. Right, it's not so it's not so prominent now, I'm a bit happier with that. Right, the eye, if we look at the eye now, I mean actually that's quite a lot darker, isn't it? Than what I've got. So that's what I'm doing all the time is comparing and contrasting. So let's get some burnt umber then. Burnt umber now with some sap green, quite viscous, quite strong and some French ultramarine blue. So we've got a very much and a tiny little speck more of water. So I'm going to redo now the dark markings on the frog. So I'm going to start with the, the nostril area and I'm just stippling now some of these dark areas including this ellipse in the eye. I want to make that a bit bigger. It's a bit small. It's slightly ovoid in shape. Keep the little white highlight. Now there's this dark area that's all around this side of the eye and it tapers off. It's sort of the crescent becomes fatter there. And it's darker here as well. I'm going over I'm going over this dark area again with this newer slightly darker mix just making it a bit of a again a patchy application it's not perfect now there's a I want to push that shoulder there so I'm just going to make a little um, dark accent there then push the shadow right under that mouth and it tapers away to nothing and tapers away in there. Then into this slightly moist area, a little bit of a line that tapers away to invisibility. Then let's have a fold uh, in the skin and I'm making it very thin at the extremes and fatter in the middle. There's a bit of a shadow behind the eye there. So just push that in. And there's a much darker area in the toes in this foot. So I'm really pushing them. And that lovely crease in his elbow, I'll redo that and make it a broken line again. And I'll re-darken this shadow. I'm going to have a few little wiggly lines. These are the final little details now. You now these come at the end always in a painting. Don't, don't ever bother putting these in in the early stages because you'll just be painting over them so you'll, you'll lose everything. These are called the tiny little you know accents that are right at the end of your work. There's a bit of a shadow, a strong sunlit shadow there. A few wrinkles there. And darker there as well.
Right, so I feel he's a bit better now. Apart from this, I have a little bit more burnt umber into that green, dark green mix again because the eye is just way too light. As you can see, this eye is paler at the top arc and darker in the bottom arc. Okay, so I'm going to use a stippling action now to very sensitively just fill in but leaving some speckles because frogs have got these magical golden sort of speckly eyes in places so I'm leaving some of the gold showing through so I'm using the tip of my brush and just speckling in and he's got a few speckles in the top one but not as many I want to keep the top arc much paler than the bottom one so that it comes sorry that's too far away so that it comes to life and there's definitely a fold and a bulge there and that tapers in Happier with that eye now. Mm. Could be a bit darker over here as well. A few speckles right above the pupil there. A few speckles there. And I'm sensing I need a, just a sort of bit of a shadow from the curve of his snout there behind this eye to give his head a bit of flatness um, before the bulge of his eye on the other side so I'm just darkening that off and then a loose sort of greeny wash just to sort of unify a little bit and see this dark area here this is a sort of mid-tone greeny wash I'm just going to unify that And darken his nose a little bit. Right now that uh, I've moistened my size 3 brush and I've flicked it and I want to soften that line away up into the uh, eye on the other side a bit okay. Right so finally what I'm going to do is get um, my size 5 brush again I've moistened it and I flicked it let's destroy the handles so there's no blobs now in order to just unify some of the areas that might look a bit hard I'm just going to very gently let's check that's on very gently touch this moist brush very lightly all over them and some areas that might be more moist than others will sort of gently dissolve. See, I'm just using this swooshing, swooshing action back and forth. Some areas will remain uh, undissolved and some will, will blend a little bit more softly. So it's like just sort of gently caressing the whole painting with this slightly moist brush. Part way through, I'm going to rinse it, flick it really hard so that I'm working with clear water on top of the frog like this you see swooshing very gently side by side to side moist my brush again flick it you just want a tiny little veil of water to go over the frog and what that does is flick my brush rinse it again it just helps the, the paint to sink in and relax into the paper a degree just a little degree so it takes any sort of um, hardness off and it makes it just unifies it and where you think it's still scratchy you can go back over it again right where you think it needs more softening you can do that I'm going to 
going to soften all of the snout area here because I feel that the it needs a bit of unification there very carefully around that eye don't want to lose too much of that you see this just and I'm definitely want to keep that white that little pop of white there is quite nice isn't it so on his back let's swoosh back and forth with slight with the slight thin thin veil of water Right, I'm happier now. Okay, so if I, if I lift him up and you get some more daylight, uh, if I can zoom, around, zoom out a bit. Right, so there he is in, in, in daylight now. You can see it a bit better. Okay. Right, so I'm going to leave him there. And there's a the frog study. Okay, so if you've got any questions, please ask. Before I forget, I've just got my new magazine out. Well, this, the second issue of my magazine is an art magazine, and uh, it's called The Pottery and Artist. The first one came out in February, and the second one came out today. And this one's called uh, Gaze, and the first one was called Delight. And if I just flick through them, basically it's all about my creative journey um, and fill in my creative well. And there are tips, tutorials, commentaries and step-by-steps on different uh, techniques in watercolour, pen and ink, some uh, gouache and uh, pastel. There's a step-by-step a, a -step of painting bottles there. So you can pick up techniques. And I just wanted to, um, this colour mix in, I wanted to encourage people to just colour mix in their yellows, just to go slowly in the creative process. This is issue two. So this has um, got some gouache, it's got some drawing, it's got some tonal work, it's got some pastel work, it's got some book reviews, it's got blind contour drawing to help you get onto the creative right-hand side of your brain. Everything in here is to do with me. Uh, I've either painted it or I've been there. So it's it's very personal. And so it's my own uh, experience of painting and drawing. And, and there's some giveaways in there as well. And then there's watercolour weaving. Okay, there's people showing their studios from around the world, readers from around the world. Then there's a waggle dance, which is a step-by-step -step of some small floral uh, watercolours okay and then that's what's in the next issue so if you want to buy this um that'll be in the link you know in the text if you read the text under this um video but if you google the pottery and artist you'll be sent to either my blog or blurb that's the website that sells the pottery and artist all right so i hope you've enjoyed uh, doing the frog there he is now so um i, I think he's finished Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.